Hi, it's Barbie from the Collier County Public Library here at the beautiful Vanderbilt Beach Branch. And I am here today with a program on literary libations to start off your December. Remember, all the materials I mentioned today are available on our website, collierlibrary.org. So check us out. What is better than books and brews? Well, nothing, of course. Both have the power to intoxicate. Some of our greatest writers were also legendary drinkers. And our program today is favorite authors and their signature drinks. Now, I am in no way advocating that you drink as these authors did. A piece of well-known writing advice is write drunk and add it sober, which is cute, but does not make typing coherent sentences any easier. And of course, some of our great authors have died from alcoholism. So I am not saying do a Hemingway and go on a three-day bender. What I am saying is to each their own, and please write responsibly. Today I'm going to start with William Shakespeare and his drink of choice, which was called Methaglen, which is actually a fermented honey wine. And it's referred to in The Merry Wives of Windsor and quite a few of his other works, actually. Some works I can recommend if you want to know more about Shakespeare. Uh, of course, the complete works. Reading Shakespeare is one of those things that we always tell ourselves we're going to do, and then we don't do it. This is the year. Read some Shakespeare. Just do it. And here we have Shakespeare, The World is Stage by Bill Bryson. There is no one better to tackle the most celebrated poet in the English language than Bill Bryson. Um, and we have Shakespeare in Love. This is a DVD. This is the movie that made Shakespeare popular for about 10 minutes quite a few years ago. Next, we have Edgar Allan Poe. Poe loved his seasonal beverages. And of course, he was a very heavy drinker who may have died from alcoholism or rabies, depending on who you ask. What we do know is that he liked cognac and that the Poe family had a, did their very own eggnog recipe. Now, materials I can recommend on Poe. Here we have this beautiful copy of his complete works. We have a book on CD. This is actually narrated by Vincent Price. I am a huge fan of Vincent Price uh, and Basil Rathbone. So, can't go wrong there. We also have Edgar Allan Poe and the London Monster. This book is actually part of a series. It's the first in a series with my beloved Edgar as a detective, actually. Next, we have Mark Twain. Mark Twain's drink of choice was a whiskey cocktail, which he felt aided his digestion. Um, and apparently, according to a letter to his wife, lit the fires of love. Uh, today I have Tom Sawyer, of course, and I have Huckleberry Finn on CD. Um, very often I will recommend a classic as a download or as a book on CD. There is really a strange calm that you experience when you're listening to the words of Mark Twain or some other classic author while you're trying to keep your road rage under control and drive safely. So. It's really a good idea. Downloadable books are a wonderful way to fit a few more books into your reading life. And I also have 50 Funniest American Writers, which is from Mark Twain to The Onion. Humor, of course, is subjective. So all of the stories in this book may not make you laugh, but some of them will. And during this not-so-fun time, laughing is more important than ever. Next, we have Ernest Hemingway. Whether it was absinthe in Paris, beers in Madrid, or rum in the tropics, Hemingway made himself at home in bars and cities all over the world, and he was an enthusiastic drinker. Uh, today, I have his most popular book, Old Man of the Sea. I have this book, The Good Life, According to Ernest Hemingway. And this author actually traveled with Hemingway for years, here he collects observations and photos, and he really paints a wonderful, rich portrait of Ernest Hemingway. And then I have this book, 
Blocks from Hemingway's Paris. Obviously, this is an older title in our collection, but it is such fun, and it is perfect for armchair travel, which is what most of us are doing these days. Now we have Ian Fleming. Ian Fleming is the creator of everyone's favorite international man of mystery, James Bond. And he and his creation, James Bond, share the same signature drink, which is a Vesper martini. Um, you can learn more about them both by checking out Geek's books. This one, The Man with the Golden Typewriter. Ian Fleming actually bought a typewriter made of gold after he finished his first book, Casino Royale, um, as a present to himself. And this compilation of letters is just sparkling and fun. We have the man who saved Britain. James Bond saves his country and the West from vicious villains. This is what he does. But this book is sort of a personal study of him, and it helps you understand Bond as well as enjoy Bond. Um, and we have the DVD Casino Royale, because I sincerely hope that this series goes on forever. Well, here we have Sylvia Plath and Anne Sexton. Sylvia Plath and her BFF, Anne Sexton, like to hit the bar after their poetry class in Boston. And there they would order three martinis each. And then they would complain about men and death. And that may not sound like a real good time, but the work that these ladies left behind speaks for itself. Here I have Sylvia Plath's best known work, of course, The Bell Jar. This great biography, Hayden Hardy's work, this biography actually focuses on the events that were taking place while she was writing The Bell Jar. And I have Anne Sexton. If you haven't read Anne Sexton, please do. Uh, she is incredible. And this is going to stand alone because this is one of my favorite live items that we have in the Collier County Public Library. Um, it's called Poetry on Record. It's 98 poets actually reading your work. Poetry is meant to be heard. And there's something very special about a poet reading your own work. Um, and in this, you can hear both women read, both Anne Sexton and Sylvia Plath. You can hear them read their work and sort of dip your toes in their brilliance. Truman Capote. Well, Truman Capote was the original diva. Um, he was quoted saying that he couldn't think unless he was lying down and had a cigar in one hand and a drink in the other. Um, his favorite drink was orange juice and vodka, which of course is a screwdriver. He called it his orange drink. Um, I'd like to recommend these items for Capote. Um, a small book of short stories uh, in cold blood, and this book. It's a book of his essays, portraits and observations. Too often, Capote's talent as a writer sort of gets buried by stories of his wit and his lifestyle. And these books can remind you of the talent that was his alone. Okay, well. Hunter Thompson is our last writer today. His favorite drink was a Singapore sling with a side of mezcal and a beer chaser. This is a man who kept odd hours and hard habits, but he blurred the line of fiction and journalism better than anyone. I can recommend um, Fear and Loathing at Rolling Stone. This actually contains his essential writings. This is a great way if you don't know Hunter Thompson to be introduced. Sticky Fingers, this is the biography of Jan Wenner, the gentleman who founded the magazine Rolling Stone. And this DVD, which is really fun, called Gonzo, it's actually narrated by Hunter's personal friend, Johnny Depp. 
So that's all I have for you today. And I thank you for your time today. I hope this program inspires your next cocktail party, whether it's a party for one or a socially distant small group. Um, whatever you celebrate, do it with joy and be well, always, always. Remember to leave questions or comments here at the email address on your screen and join me next month for five book suggestions featuring over the hill heroines. I have a quote to leave you with, live the full life of the mind, exhilarated by new ideas, intoxicated by the romance of the unusual. And that's our very own Ernest Hemingway. Thank you.